it's cheater deadlift day or sumos as most of you call them and they are called cheater deadlifts because of the limited range of motion and it's just a joke they are allowed in powerlifting but it is one of the few things that strongman does not allow which is primarily due to most of their events starting from a higher bar position but glenn and i wanted to try sumo because we are both thinking that we want to try and do a powerlifting competition either this winter or next spring during the off season so you can see Glenn there he's got a fairly narrow sumo stance and uh, it's going up a little bit uneven but that is very much due to the unfamiliarity with the movement and one of the things that Glenn was struggling with is letting his hips shoot up and trying to turn the sumo deadlift into a conventional pull with a wider stance. I mean, the sumo deadlift, you want to have your back in a more upright position and it should be easy to lock out, hard to break off for. You see here, I'm a little bit wider than he is and you can definitely tell I don't know where my hands should be because of how uneven the bar goes up. Look at this right here. It just, one side goes up, then the other twists. The second one was a little bit better. And then the third one goes back to being bad here. But it did give me quite a bit of uh, discomfort in the right hip. So I wanted to try something different the next time. We decided to go, that was 405. We went to 455 here. And you can see it doesn't come off the ground. Yeah, I was trying to Totally blows Glenn away. That's something that conventional super easy and comes off the floor without any difficulty and with sumo just pinned to the floor so he attempts it again but that's something that you always have to remember if you don't train it don't expect to be good at it. some people can go to sumo and just do very well without training it most people aren't do, aren't going to be able to do that and Glenn does have a narrow stance you can see I went a little bit narrower and almost fell over I wanted to try and see if bringing my feet in a little bit would alleviate the discomfort in my hip and I didn't get to test it because the bar didn't move one bit it feels so weird I went in to try again can I get this bar to move And today was the day that gravity won. So we're going to have to keep training sumo. But we wanted to go ahead and just throw a couple of conventional pulls in there just to get some work in. And you can see Glenn really kind of going slow with that rep. I think just trying to train sumo and using the different muscles, it did fatigue us a little bit more than I would have expected. You can see me, these are really slow pulls not happy with that at all yes. and of course crying about my hands One, but oh, here we wanted to do pause five. deadlifts uh, double pause Glenn misunderstood what we were doing here in the beginning but we pause right off the floor and then right below your knees so those are the two places that in a conventional deadlift are you're going to be your most common places to fail at the deadlift typically for most lifters if you can get it above your knees you will be able to lock out the conventional deadlift so either you're going to fail to get it off the floor or you're going to fail to pass your knees and these were, this is only 315 pounds. They were very, very difficult. And I was surprised, and I think Glenn was pretty surprised by them too. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, Again, just five. right off the floor, One, two, right to the knees. And we were doing a, a five count pause. I don't think that that's necessarily something that you need to do. I've seen people do just a slight pause or a two second pause. Basically what you would do when you were training your pause bench press for a competition. And they do that with the deadlifts. And I think it works pretty well. Next, we wanted to go over and do a Romanian deadlift, and this is 
as of uh, last week I commented on how it's a new movement for us we're trying to get it down really working on it trying to get our form in and practice this movement to increase the hamstring strength and endurance in the lower back so we're keeping the weight decent at 315 and making sure that we're getting some reps in so what we wanted to do here is up to 10 reps really try and focus in on getting them in and uh, I'm actually surprised watching this video how far I'm getting it down I think that these are helping stretch out my hamstrings a little bit which is exciting I would like to get a little bit more hamstring flexibility but I think if I would have taken a side angle here like I did last week I would see a little bit more knee bend than I would want to see and uh, you know Romanian deadlifts just like stiff legged deadlifts you have some people that say don't bend the knees at all you have other people that say bend the knees I think you just do what works for you and what we were really trying to do is picture in our heads where would we be in this position in our deadlift so Glenn deadlifts a little bit different than me and I deadlift a little bit different than him where would we be let's work on that part of the movement train it and get more efficient at the deadlift and I think this as I said with the endurance that's going to be a big help but also because we are increasing the reps it's going to lead to some hypertrophy and increase the muscle size which will then allow us to build the strength as it's a little bit bigger and this is where I got sabotaged so those of you who saw the video where a bug attacked me and tried to destroy my set this is where it happened this is only the second set of Romanian deadlifts and we were gonna do a lot more things after this but I was coughing and almost puking for quite a bit here and uh, actually kind of bruised my lungs and was completely demoralized so I decided you know what that was not enough protein I'm gonna go inside and this is just my dinner chicken broccoli and green beans alright that's it have a good one everybody